Now we got it in there and clamped. The glue is still squeezed out a little bit. Made sure it's staying squeezed. We'll leave it for the 24 hours. See it's squeezing right out. It's beginning to set up though. Now, 9.9. I'm not sure I like them as much as some of the others. I like the older Mercury's better. Now we got this one running pretty quick. It had spark and you know it ran pretty good. But when we got into the lower unit, I started checking things out and water poured out of that. So basically the seals underneath the water pump had blown out or the gasket underneath the water pump had blown out and uh, basically pumped that full of water. So it's going to be a project. I'm going to have to tear out the lower unit and it'll be a good video, right? But we got a good power head. So we're like, what do we do? I mean, I'm not going to be able to make that mercury work in a day, right? It's going to take some parts. And basically we've had this 15 horse Johnson sort of sitting around now for, I don't know, a couple of years. No one's ever run it. It's a little dirty. Probably needs a fuel pump. And I wanted to make sure it pumped. They've got that little P valve down there. So I just put a straight tube to the where that valve goes. And let's just see if it'll start. Okay, so replace this line, this one from the fuel pump to the carburetor, replace the fuel pump, spark plugs, and the fitting for the fuel line to go in there. All those have been replaced. So slid the boat right off the back of the trailer, right across the head wall right there into the water, and there it sits. Well, we got this thing running, and uh, there's a little video of that. First thing I figured out about this boat, it's a lot harder to get it on plane, partly because it's heavier and wider, um, but that's also some of the reason why we got it from the get-go, is because it's got more freeboard, and uh, it's a wider boat to work from when I want to go fishing. So it's a better fishing boat than OGP, but it needs a little more horsepower. Although, once we get it on plane, this thing goes pretty good. Now, Johnson... Evinrude versus Mercury. Now I've got the 20 Mercury on OGP. That thing just flat flies. This one here, once it gets on plane, goes pretty good as well. Both of them are set up for control, so you have to operate the forward and reverse from this lever right here. You know, even though it's a tiller motor. The other Mercury in the back of that truck right there, forward and reverse are on the tiller itself. You rotate that, and you go to forward, you rotate it back, you go to reverse, which is kind of cool. But one thing I like about the Johnson is you have your mixture screw right here for idle. Basically, if you turn it in, it leans things out. If you turn it out, it adds more fuel. And uh, when you're doing a fine tune to get it to idle nice and run a slow RPM to get into the dock, having that ability to quickly tune your motor based on the different temperatures, humidities, and stuff like that is really nice. So right now, as a all-around motor to go fishing with, not to go fast with. Little things like that, and just the way the handle feels and stuff like that. I think this old Johnson 15 is a better motor. Now, that's going to get me in trouble, because I'm a Merc person, number one, and there's a lot of other people who are as well. Just saying, you know. Another thing is, you start playing this outboard game, make sure 
these are secure and tight, especially with a long shaft. It'll take that motor right off the transmit if they're loose. And you'll be out there drifting around, wondering what the heck happened and having this big empty space back here. The way this boat's set up, you notice how far I have to bring the, the lower unit in, the tower in, to get it on plane. The good news is it gets on plane. The bad news is at that angle I'm losing some top end. If I kick it out one position, it simply won't get it on plane. There's not enough horsepower. And having it all the way in, sure I get it up on plane, but now it starts driving the, the front of the boat, the bow of the boat, down into the water a little bit and you lose uh, top speed potential. Alright, so now for the fishing part of the channel. It's low tide right now. And I want to go out and hang out by that pole with that bird sitting on top of that mooring and see if I can't catch a real fish for once. Couple things. Now we've got a little time on this motor. It seems like it runs better every time we run it. And interesting, it doesn't lose any prime at all. So let's see how easy it is to start. We'll start with that, huh? And. Probably a flounder. Here he goes. He's going up. I'll go around the boat. This one's pretty good. Hey, oh, there he goes. God damn it. Shoot. Can you get him off? Yeah. Wait, can I stop recording? I'll be able to get him out of there. I'm just going to release him in the water. Alright, I'm going to turn this off. So Check that out. That is a crab. Now I guess at some point a summary is in order. 
I guess a comparison between that boat right there and the old StarCraft we have. This one's wider and has more freeboard and makes it a lot more stable for a fishing boat and dealing with the water like down here this is a much better boat you know and with the seats the way they are partly because of the free board it's a taller boat you can actually sit in that boat your knees are not up in your chest so just all the way around it's a more comfortable boat to be in so that's a summary on that I like a little more horsepower I mean it does get on plane it actually it actually goes pretty decent but it, it sometimes is work and what happens is when you have two people in the boat the way you have to have the motor set is it just ends up driving the bow right into the water but it doesn't have enough power to really pull it up on plane if I step it out one notch you know so that's really it and you know it's a bent up little boat works pretty good doesn't use a lot of fuel that's good it's easy to start the motors easy to start well, other than that, that's about all there is to say about the boat. It works. I think the lesson is uh, you get what you pay for in reels. Look at that thing twist. I caught a stingray on this the other day. And that thing was just flexing all over the place. Kind of a creepy feeling. Whereas that pin right here, that thing's solid. That stem right there is, is a metal. It does not bend much better piece of equipment and this rod this is a St. Croix I've been using this for my light rig I know it's a little bit long I've been very very pleasantly surprised with the way this thing operates very nice rod and reel and uh, that's the only lure I've caught any fish on down here right here get the mullet jumping and that kind of looks like a pinfish I think is why so beautiful place down here but you got to know how to fish it and I'm just learning that rig right there caught a fish you know just like it always does that's using that snap or popping float right there and a jig head and either live shrimp or uh, Berkeley gulp shrimp the larger ones seems to work pretty good down here and uh, I haven't run the camera as much as I normally do. Partly because I don't catch anything for a long time. I just shut it off. And also I catch something. The camera's not on. And uh, I'm too much caught up in the heat of the moment. The only time I actually got video of a catch is when I caught the stingray. I had to let that go.
think my little fishing party is coming to an end. There's a storm coming in. We've got these just being a half a mile out, probably not the best idea. So I better get in and call it a night, get the boat up in the trailer. You're not supposed to do that because a lesser boat you can damage the keel, just break the darn boat. But fortunately, that's a decent little boat. <laughs> 